I'm Julie Bartke with Session Update. The first piece of legislation to be debated on the Senate floor garnered more than two hours of discussion. Senator Chris Eaton's legislation would ratify the union contracts of some state employees. We'd like to show you right now some of that debate. Senator Bach. Well, thank you, Madam President. I've been sitting back here observing uh, the debate going on and just want to let uh, those of you uh, that plan to vote no today let you know you're going to have another opportunity to have a day just like this because all of the state contracts aren't settled yet. Uh, we're going to see uh, the contracts yet for our uh, college faculty at our two and four year schools. We're going to see, I don't want to believe the Highway Patrol's contract is, is here yet and I believe there are other couple of all our smaller ones that, so you're going to get another opportunity to have another day like this. So. Uh, be prepared for that. But I've been sitting here thinking to myself, who are they? Who are these people that we're talking about that we're going to give a 1% pay increase to after in 2011 we told them, go sit home for six weeks because we're shutting state government down because your paycheck's not important. What's important is we're not going to raise a dime of revenue to pay you. So just kind of thinking about my own district, driving up the North Shore in my mind as I was sitting here and I was thinking about the Silver Bay Veterans Home. I was thinking about all the people, and it's the largest employer in that little town outside of the mine, the mine's outside the city limits. All the people that work there that care for our veterans in that nursing home, they're state employees. And my uncle was one of them until December when he passed away. They pick up the trash in our state parks, and I've got plenty of those. I think I have, I, I know I have more of them than any, of, any others do. I think I have 10 uh, in my district. They process our driver's licenses, our vehicle transfers, and we all are getting some complaints about that, that that's taken a little uh, too long, and, and I, some, some of that is our own fault for cutting back on the number of state employees that we have processing those transactions. And then our other public employees that maybe aren't covered by this contract, but I think are all getting painted with this same brush today, that provide for our public safety, our firefighters and our police, and the people that drive our ambulances when we have an emergency. Public employees are the employees who teach our children, plow our roads, patch our potholes, care for us in our hospitals. And yeah, at the end of the day, when we all go home, they're going to clean up the Capitol so it's all ready for tomorrow. They're going to empty the trash in our offices. And I rise today, Madam Chair, to thank them all of the public employees across this state that have a huge impact on the quality of life of all Minnesotans, whether they work uh, for the state or for the county or for the city. And I think sometimes we forget the services that they provide, how they improve the quality of our life, and how efficient they are. And somebody can look this up and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I read the other day that that we have the seventh lowest per capita number of state employees in our state in the country. In the country. We're even better than I think Florida, uh, who have a lot of need for public services because they have so many elderly people. So they not only do it in a very professional way, they do it with an incredible level of productivity because we're more efficient than 43 other states in delivering those services for, to our people. So I rise today on behalf of all of us to thank them and tell them that I'm going to feel real, real good about putting a green vote up for them. I wish it was more than a 1% pay increase. I think they deserve more than that, especially considering the fact that in the last biennium we sent them home without pay for several weeks. And I'd like to see a bipartisan vote for this bill. I think those people, I think most of us, maybe all of us, 
if we really drill down and think about it, appreciate the work that they do for all of us. And I think giving them uh, a 1% pay increase, and if some of them have been here a number of years, a step increase to acknowledge their experience is uh, hardly unreasonable. So I would encourage a green vote. Senator Han. Madam President uh, and members, and we appreciate the remarks of the majority leader, and I think all of us share the appreciation for the work that the many public employees do on behalf of the state and on behalf of all of us. And we know that they do work hard and they do provide great service. But it does seem to be the fact that uh, we do treat our public employees uh, fairly depending on where they work. And if they happen to work for the Senate Republican Caucus, then fairness has a different meaning. If you look at and judging by the actions of this majority and how the members, the public employees of that caucus were treated less than a month ago with respect to their compensation. And so we do think it's important how public employees are treated. And we do think it's important it's not just all the public employees who work outside of the Capitol, but also those who work in the Capitol. And it shouldn't matter which political caucus they work for. They should all be treated fairly and treated in the same way. I think, too, there is a lot of questions that have been raised about fairness and compensation, and it's been made very clear in the efforts that were made on this floor to try to offer amendments that I understand procedurally, and, and uh, we understand how the rules work, that our amendments were not rule germane, but it was made very clear, because some of those amendments are brought up in committee, that, that there is no desire to ask public employees to participate in the payment of their health care benefits, not even 5 percent, which is markedly different than what most people do. Most people have some share in the cost of their health care, but we're not asking public employees to participate at all in the cost of that health care insurance. So I think that we're certainly being fair in the compensation and the benefits for our employees. But I would say that the question about whether or not we're asking for uh, an improvement in services or we're actually getting things when we give people raises, when we ask, we're, gonna, we're asking the public to, to pay more, are we getting more? And I would just say that this is an example. We're going to spend a lot of money. We're going to pass a contract that's going to pay a lot more. And I think it's an example, I think, of the larger theme that we're seeing emerge here, that we're being asked to pay more and expect less. And that's what this contract represents. And so, members, I would uh, respectfully ask that we reconsider this contract and perhaps put some stronger performance incentives in how we do these contracts in the future and do it with respect to greater fairness. That measure passed by a vote of 40 to 25.